Here are 10 common makeup mistakes we all make and I'm going to show you how to fix them. On my left side, I'm going to show you the mistakes and on my right side, I'm going to show you how to fix it. Our skin is like a bumpy road. Even if you have oily skin, you can have cracks and you can have dryness. The first mistake most of us make is not prepping our skin. After using a moisturizer and a sunscreen, I use a face primer. I'm again going to be using it only on my right side. While the primer smooths out your skin, it's also going to fill in all the pores and fine lines. So when you apply makeup over this, it's not going to settle in the fine lines and cake up. Most primers are also tacky. So when you apply a foundation or concealer over this, it's going to stick on or hold on to that primer and last longer. Next, here's a super common mistake that most of us do while applying foundation. And to demo this, I'm going to be using the Revlon Photo Ready Candid Foundation. And I'm using the shade 340. And the mistake is applying the foundation outward and meaning applying too much foundation in the circumference of the face. Knowingly or unknowingly, that'll get in your hairline. I personally have made this mistake so many times in the past and it's so hard to get it off your hairline after you're done. The right way to apply foundation is to the center of the face and then spread it outward. So when it reaches your hairline, there's minimal product and you have more control. And doing it this way will prevent your foundation from getting in your hairline. Everyone knows the next common mistake, which is using too much concealer. On my left side, I'm using too much concealer. Applying too much concealer in a targeted area can make it look cakey and blending becomes a nightmare. Our dark circles are deepest in the corners, in the inner and outer, and that's where you need the concealer. So all you need to do is just dot a few drops in those areas and blend it out. If that doesn't cover your dark circles, you can most definitely use a second layer over this. When you layer it, blending becomes so much easier because you have more control rather than using too much product in one area. The next mistake most of us make is using a lighter shade of concealer to cover up your patches and dark spots. To demo this, I'm going to be using the Milani concealer in the shade 135, which is way lighter than my skin tone on my left side. I'm using this to spot correct. The spots, hyperpigmentation and patches on your skin usually have a blue undertone. When you apply a lighter shade of concealer, it's going to mix with the blue undertones and give you an ashy finish. You can clearly see patches of concealer when you apply it this way. Instead, to conceal and correct, use a concealer that's a true match to your skin tone. And for me, it's the Milani concealer in the shade 145. Here's the difference in shades. You can see the lighter one is 135 and the deeper one is 1. 45. All you need is just a tad bit of product. Again, I'm going to be using it to spot correct and in my patches. Using the same skin tone concealer is going to conceal and correct your uneven skin and it's also going to blend in with your foundation and your skin tone. A lighter shade of concealer is used to highlight areas of your face. So if you apply it on your dark spots, even your dark spots get highlighted. I'm going to make a second attempt to blend out the lighter concealer on the other side. And as you can see, you can still see the patches. Another super common mistake that many of us make is to use a volumizing mascara on thick lashes. If you already have thick lashes and you end up using a volumizing or a thickening mascara over it, it's going to clump up and give you clumpy spider-like lashes. Instead, use a lengthening mascara and to demo this, I'm going to be using the ColourPop Level Up Lengthening Mascara. While this may not add too much volume, it's definitely going to add the length. And you can do the other way around if you have thinner, longer lashes. Use a thickening mascara or a volumizing mascara to give it more volume. My lashes are thicker and shorter and that's why I'm using a lengthening mascara. And as you can see, my right side looks so much better than my left side. Next mistake is to use a shimmering bronzer as a contour. Contours are meant to mimic shadows which have a gray tone. So if you're going to use bronzers with orange tones or have shimmer in it, it's not going to look natural. Instead, try using cooler contour shades. They are closer to colors of shadows and they look more natural. I'm going to be using the shade Fawn from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Contour Kit. You can clearly see the difference in shades. One is cooler and looks more gray, like a shadow, and the other one looks more orange. Again, try to use less product, enhancing your natural shadows, and that's going to create more depth. And that's going to create more depth. You can also use it under your jawline. Now I'm going to use the bronzer to warm up my face. 
and that's mostly in the circumference of my face and right above my contour on my cheekbones. A bronzer is applied to mimic a sun-kissed tan. The only time you can use a bronzer as a contour is one if it's matte and if it's a cooler shade. As you can see, my right side looks more natural and chiseled as compared to my left side. Makeup has no rules, but here's something that looks a little tacky. That's playing up both the eyes and the lips. Either let your eyes dazzle or glam up your lips. Although makeup has no rules, it's about balancing everything on your face. If you're going to go bold on your eyes, try to keep your lips muted to balance it out with your eyes. And if your lips are going to steal the thunder, keep your eye makeup neutral. The magic in makeup comes through when you have one focal point that stands out and you work everything else around it to balance it out. Here's a mistake I still do at times. That's applying makeup in the wrong lighting. When you need to decide what works for you and what doesn't with regard to makeup, you need to test it out on your skin in natural lighting. When you try on makeup in unnatural lighting, especially when you swatch makeup at stores, you will notice that it doesn't look as flattering as you hoped in natural lighting. Pick what suits you best in the best lighting possible. And we've all observed the next mistake, overlining the lips to the max. Fillers and injectables have made this a trend to overline lips and you see it all over social media. And overlining all around the lips makes it look pretty obvious. Instead, try overlining just your cupid's bow and the bottommost portion of your lower lip and then join it to your natural lip line. Make sure to smudge and shade your lip liner before you apply a lipstick so your lip liner and lipstick blend in together to give a more natural finish. And doing it this way gives you a more natural, plumped looking lips. Last but not least, sleeping with makeup on. There's absolutely no excuses for going to bed without removing all traces of makeup. Even if you're exhausted at the end of the day, you don't have to follow a detailed skincare routine. All you have to do is get that makeup off. Failing to do so will make your skin dry, prone to acne and infections. And those, my friends, are the most common 10 makeup mistakes that I have observed and I'd love to know which ones do you do. Let me know if you want a part two and I'll be happy to help. I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next one. Bye.